and peace. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for patiently waiting uh, and welcome to another episode of Family Issues. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to our, all of our Khuda TV, not viewers, but family all around the, the world. Uh, today I'm joined by a good brother, a brother I met years ago, a couple years ago in Los Angeles, California, and that is Brother Abdul Salam. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You've been with me on Viewers Pulse, you've been with me in, uh, on the Hajj Day today. Yes. And I, not, you haven't been with me on Let's Talk, though. Did we do that stuff? I don't, I don't think know. so. Inshallah, that'll soon. I have to write that in my. <laughs> <laughs> and brother, before the episode's over, I'm gonna, you're going to have to do it in the sheet for us because you can't come here without doing it in the sheet. I hope so, man. You, you said I got my, my cup of tea out here, man. I'm just, you know, my voice is just recovering I'm, I'm from just a little cold, but inshallah. No, I'm, just, I'm just giving you a hard time. You don't have okay. to. <laughs> I want to remind the viewers, I, I forgot, but the Salam, um, our phone number, of course, is 002023855248 or 249. I can even say it without looking at it. Can you say it? Zero zero two zero two three eight triple five two four eight two four nine, and we're live. And please give us a call. Uh, family issues at huda TV is our email. Abdul Salam. That's family issues at huda TV or on Facebook dot com slash family issues, Facebook dot com slash huda TV, and also they can check us out on YouTube. And please support us on YouTube and social media. YouTube dot com slash huda TV. Inshallah, Tan. Brother, our our topic today is friendship, mm. making friends. The importance of it in, in, in our lives. Uh, and it's important in our lives as adults and young people, isn't it? But yeah. it is for both, right? Mm -hmm. But at what point is it more important, do you think? What, at what point is a person more influenced by his friends? Um, you know, Allah knows best. But I would say that, um, you know, in those teenage years, you know, and even when they're young, you know, I have a little son, you know. He's about almost two years old. Mashallah. And when he hangs out with his cousins, you know, they're like two and three and they're four. Like dad. Well, you know, naturally. But <laughs> like also, son. he learns a lot of stuff from them. Yeah. He learns, like, he, you know, when he's walking a little bit, he sees them walk, and then he, wants, he walks more, sure. right? Yeah. Uh, when he, you know, he, see, he sees them climb the stairs, so then he starts to try, you know? So he learns from them. He learns from them a lot. A lot. Yeah. But as maturity grows... I would say I would believe you would be less influenced by your peers as you become a more mature adult. Yeah. But up until your teenage years, you're highly influenced by them. Yeah. Your your friends and and and, and uh, people around you. My son is three, and when his little cousins come around, he wants to break everything, run around, ride motorcycles, and all that, because he's influenced, of course, by his friend. But perhaps we can go back and really define what does friend mean? What does the word friend mean uh, in our culture? Perhaps coming from the states, what do we mean when we, when we say this person's my friend? Well. I think you have different kind of what uh, categories of friends. Like you, if you know someone, oh yeah, that's my friend. But yeah. then you have good friends, people who you you know, yeah. like that trust tight circle. Yeah, you trust yeah. them. Uh, you talk to them. You get advice from them. You know, right? You're in the same kind of circles, be it a learning circle or a social circle with them. Right. right. So um, when you're in the same situations, you become friends. You know. Right. And also, you know. Perhaps you have people in your life that you don't stay in touch with on a regular basis, but you say, you can say, I believe this brother, he's a good brother, mashallah. Yeah. You have respect for him. Although perhaps you're not in his daily, day-to-day -day life, for example. I know a lot of brothers like that, and I'm sure you do too, you know. I consider you one of those brothers. And I a lot of brothers that. I met here, you know, I don't stay in touch with them, but I met many people come through here. And I always feel, I'm, you know, this guy's a good brother, although I'm not on a daily uh, contact with him. Mm. So let's look then, let's speak about the criteria of building a friendship. What should we look at as practicing Muslims? Alhamdulillah, we consider ourselves practicing Muslims. Yeah. So what should the criteria be for, for a good friend? Of course, if you say this person is my friend, this person should be a believer. You know, uh, a believer shouldn't uh, take a friend, uh, a, a non-believer, as a friend, especially over uh, another believer. So, oh, yeah. And alhamdulillah, there's a lot of believers around yeah. here. We're not like, it's like the last people on earth is a believer yeah. or a non-believer. Especially here in the Middle East, mashallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So one, they're a believer, uh, Muslim, and their um, their their behavior is good, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, because that's a, I think, a good point. You know, uh, people, you know, we say ashadu la ilaha illallah, ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah, but we have to have the 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 manners, the akhlaq. Yeah, you of know? course. Nah, um, uh, we have to have <coughs> the the mannerisms. So somebody with a good mannerism. And someone who you can trust and who's a, a good person. Yeah, of course, yeah. You know? 
I, I couldn't agree with you more. What you said, we're the people of the Shahada, so we want to put pe We didn't become Muslim for nothing, so we can hang around with the same people that we did before yeah. and with bad habits and different and bad beliefs and, and this sort of thing. Yeah. However, after I became Muslim, as a natural result of that, I, I lost most of my friends because in actuality, I didn't lose them. Allah clarified for me that they weren't actually my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and not to disrespect them, but, you know, we have a different interest and I see things in a different way now. Yeah. So I was able to... Uh, recognize that however I did keep two or three friends of mine who are good people wallahi and I still make the route for them to become Muslim yeah like my friend Scott Mo Scott Walker Johnny Marin and David Gebb yeah, my three guys just shout out the shout outs, yeah. <laughs> these guys are good people and I hope I ask a lot to, to guide them to Islam and go ahead and I would say that you know when you know you have you don't have to be isolated from them you just understand that yeah you pray for them you yeah. say you know hey come on Come to Islam, come to this better way of life, or just when you associate with them, be it a work, quote unquote, friend, or right. something, you associate with them and you're giving dawah, you know, in right. a light way, or, you know, just yeah, inviting sure. them, say, come on, you know, I don't have to cut them off, but say, hey, come on, yeah, come you, on, join. Yeah, join, get on board, because you <laughs> yeah, redefine the context. Get on board. <laughs> <laughs> you redefine the context a little bit, yeah. you know. And as a result of that, I, after becoming Muslim, actually, a lot of people, friends, realize, uh, you know, I, I they appreciate that. And even though you might not be in touch with them anymore, they appreciate that you had changed your life in a positive way. Yeah. And perhaps they don't have the courage to do it because it's a difficult thing, you know, perhaps to become Muslim. Yeah. Brother, what is the importance of friendship? That's an interesting question that one of the brothers wanted me to ask. And I asked you that question because actually before the program, you were talking about your days back at USC in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and the importance of friendship amongst the Muslims in Los Angeles and particularly on this SC campus. So can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, like, you know, being on a college campus, um, you notice, you know, people come there from all over the country to study, even, and even all over the world, actually. Yeah. It's a, um, a good place to study. And, um, you know, they leave their family, and especially like the Muslim community there, you know, you have young people, they left their families, they come here, they're new here, they don't know anything. And or that's any the middle of Los Angeles. Yeah, the University crazy. Of, of Southern California <laughs> is in the middle of Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of, kind of, kind of wild, you know. Yeah, right. But, alhamdulillah, they have a nice tight-knit community there of Muslims and they're like their student associations and stuff like that. Right. And it's beautiful. They, you know, the brothers get together and the sisters, they get together and they, you know, they comfort each other. Like if it's one sister in hijab all by herself walking in the street, then it's like, okay, you know, she feels more comfortable when it's her and her yeah. friends, all five of them are walking to class or they feel, you know, in, their, in a comfort zone. Right. When you have someone else but in a, in a, the, the lady over here, she's dressed however, and the guy over here, he's dressed however. But they're together. They're, some of them are wearing lihya. The brothers are wearing yeah. the caps, and they're establishing their Muslim yeah. identity together, and they feel comfortable yeah. because they're among uh, fellow friends, fellow Muslims. So, so you're saying, like, you know, if you're Muslim with a beard and you're surrounded by people, you know, wearing, like, basketball jerseys with, like, <laughs> short shorts named Chad, <laughs> like in fraternities, yeah. you will feel, like, a little bit, like... Uh, out of place. Out of place. <laughs> yeah. And so the women also, because they're visibly Muslim with their hijab, yeah. when they say, see women wearing these clothing that's very revealing and engage in these type of behaviors, mm -hmm. you, it's difficult. If you're by yourself, you would get lost. And your friend, the, like, he, like we help each other, you know? Like if I'm messing up, he'll... I remember yeah. one of my good yeah. friends, Ziad, he's from, actually, he's from Egypt, you know? <laughs> and I remember this is at a time when I was still, like, doing some music and stuff like that, string instruments. Yeah. And he said, uh, brother, you know, I, I invite him to one of my shows. And he said, okay, I will go, but <laughs> no string instruments. If you get rid of all the string Allah. instruments. Allah. <laughs> That's what he told me. He said, you know, and he was telling me he about... He this dawah. Yeah, he was giving me dawah. He's my friend. He was cool with it. Yeah. And it made me think, you know, it just, that's what really... You know, he kind of, and he wasn't too overbearing, but he made me think. And I yeah, said, that's great. Yeah, you know. And then after time, you see stuff in life. And so we help each other. You know, the friends, when I'm messing up, he helps me. When yes. he's messing up, I say, hey. Yeah. Or we encourage each other to do good things, you know. Yeah. So friendship is, you know, is important. really important. And that was your Egyptian friend back at SC, yeah, back in yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. So, so Egyptians make great friends. And we want to, and speaking of our Egyptian friends, we want to give them our condolences because they recently were in Ghana and they lost 6-1. We want to congratulate the team uh, down oh, in Ghana, yeah. mashallah <laughs> alaykum. They were doing a great job, and uh, you guys keep up the good work over there in Ghana. Uh, you yeah, guys, uh, I, I want to tell you a little secret, but I'll tell you if you have to. Uh, <laughs> hey, what's that? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, if you have to go to commercial or something. Well, let, me, let me hit the report, we'll come back. Okay. You guys stay tuned. We're going to check out a uh, report, inshallah, regarding this topic. Um, it's really uh, a, a wonderful report uh, speaking about friendship uh, by uh, Mufti Ismail Ming. So check it out and stay tuned.
Welcome back. I apologize. That was actually a, a different report. That was a, just a small clip of a, uh, a prophetic hadith regarding friendship. Uh, stay tuned to this episode because we will have a nice clip from uh, Sheikh uh, Mufti Ismail Mink, inshallah ta'ala. So stay tuned. Uh, Brother Basalam, going back to my point, you, I mentioned Ghana, and you had, you had wanted to mention something about that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I don't tell too many people this because, you know, you know, Egypt just lost the match. <laughs> but, you know, my great-grandfather is from Ghana. SubhanAllah. Yeah. That's so now I can claim, like, victory. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't even, I, didn't, I don't even, like, watch, like, soccer. <laughs> Neither do I. I'll tell you something. Like, this is the beauty of Islam. After becoming Muslim, I truly started meeting people from all over the world. I have a friend from Cameroon. I have many friends from Nigeria. I met people in Hajj from Malaysia, Indonesia. Mm. And so now when I enter the world of Islam, I realize, mashallah, I mean, it's really beautiful and you, there's so many different cultures and languages and, and types of people yeah uh, and it's great to have friends from different places before i was muslim i was near-minded in that respect and you're just naturally you're, you're kind of limited to your cultural um comfort zone yeah so you don't really branch out and have that many friends from different places but now it's like and you have something immediately in common with them so you mm. get to meet people on a better level it's it's nice but brother the next question is how to choose oh excuse me what about uh, usc by the way i'm sorry uh, so, I mean, did you guys, you had Iftar in Ramadan, and tell me about that. Was it fun? Yeah, um, alhamdulillah, it was good because, you know, especially in Ramadan, because all of the students, well, you would have like 100 or 130 students, and they would come together and bring all the halal pizza Where and at? pasta. Uh, at the masjid or on campus? It would be on campus, uh, right on, on campus, and then sometimes we would have it uh, in the masjid too, yeah. depending because they had like a big cafe on campus. Big yeah, because you have the Omar ibn Khattab Majid, but I saw right. you on, on, on Vermont. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, what street is it? Yeah, it's on Vermont. It's yeah, on Vermont. And what's the other one? An exposition, yeah. An exposition. And what's the other one? Wait, wait, the, there's also the Islamic Center of Southern California. Where is that? And that's further. It's on Vermont, too. That's further But it's down. like close to like a street called Wilshire. But Wilshire, oh, metro, okay, yeah, yeah. You, know, you can yeah. jump off the metro, mix a lot. And you know, I never ridden the metro in Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> I, never, I didn't even know. It's nice, man. It's nice. Oh, yeah. subhanAllah. Yeah. But that's, okay, great. All right, so that's SC. We see it's important. In colleges, in, as for young people to have yeah. friendship, and all over, like you know, the states, these yeah. these uh, MSA, yeah, I the MSAs, <coughs> man. They're sometimes they have this big MSA convention. Uh, I think it looks like an annual thing, and thousands, of, like of Muslims, or like you know, they come, they set up booths, and they, yeah. it's really nice, you know, yeah. and it's based on this, these like these friendships, actually. Yeah, these friendships, you know, these from one person to the next, and then the community, and then yeah. it, it's, it's beautiful. Well, it's great to to, yeah. to be strong as a community and. And develop a, a relationship based on the Islam and the and Quran and Sunnah because sometimes in when we're in a society where we're all Muslims we kind of forget that because we take it for granted um, mm. well let's go to our next topic which is choosing a good friend I mean how important is it to choose your friend don't let your friend choose you I mean be aware of the friend you're, you're choosing the people that you um, the people that you uh, choose to put in your life how, how important is that I think it's really important because um you're going to pick up their habits. For really, sure. you're going to pick up the habits of the people that you are around. So choosing good friends is so important uh, in Islam, you know. Uh, you want to be around people um, who are doing the right thing. If all of your friends are going to make salat and it's time for salat, you're not going to just sit there. You're going to go make salat with them. Even though, like I said, it, I didn't, you know, I was like on making the salat on time, but they were. I'm going to do like they do. And what about the reverse? If, if you're the only one who wants to pray? Yeah, you're like you feel you even you feel, feel shy like, to do it. 
You, you know why? Because I, I, I feel shy because I know that these guys around me are not praying. Yeah. I don't, so it, make, it makes you feel uncomfortable. It's the yeah. opposite effect, You're going to be right? the out one out. So, yeah, you, so you want to surround yourself with those who are praying on time. Yeah, yeah. Inshallah, yeah. And also, I, 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 I did hear a hadith, which I haven't memorized, but uh, translated as, um, the human being is on the deen of his friend. Hmm. And you know what? I thought about it. How many people do you know? That how many how, how many times have you said in your life you know so and so he's a really good guy but all his friends are terrible, <laughs> you know I mean it's a, your friends are a reflection they're kind of the, they're a reflection of who you are right yeah so if you're uh, you know a, a good person it would make sense for you to be hanging around with thugs and criminals and yeah yeah yeah, is yeah. That, so but now as a parent let's move to parenting hmm. you have several children. Yeah, like several. <laughs> Inshallah. I, I, I have two. two I have children. two, Mashallah. Uh, hello, Mustafa. <laughs> Tasneem. <laughs> so you have Mustafa and? Uh, Tasneem. Tasneem. I have uh, uh, Abdullah and Suleiman. Uh, uh, Abdullah is three and Suleiman is like seven months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with a three-year-old now, it's getting into like parenting now, really. You yeah, know? yeah. You know, I'm sure Mustafa is this age. Yeah, old. he's almost two. So he's picking up on stuff, words and yeah. behavior. So here it comes, here it comes. And, and yeah. he's getting faster and faster. He's moving faster and faster. So it, you, we have to be on, on top of this. So yeah. how, how important is it and, and what message are you going to use and what type of people do you put your kids around? Yeah. Even, even at this age, it's important. So tell me about your yeah. experiences. Yeah, I've heard that between the ages of three and five, they call it the formative years. Because the because their um, personality there that they'll have inshallah Shit for the rest on, of their yeah. life, the basic building blocks uh, are put in place at this time. So yeah, it's really important to have them around people who are like reading the Quran. You know, yes. uh, if uh, you know they see people reading the Quran, then they think it's regular to read the Quran. If they see them making salat and treating each other with kindness, they see the mother and the father um, treating each other with kindness. Yeah and stuff like that and the kids they play around they're going to be kids but if they're you know um you know not doing bad things they're doing good things sure um then yeah you want to keep them around good people and um you keep them around good friends and family you know yeah and um good family yeah especially now when you come to teenagers you know and they become more independent and um uh, it's very important to to see what kind of friends they have. And you have to be careful not to be too forceful, I would think, you know. I have a, a friend, um, he's, mashallah, he's a prominent imam in Los Angeles now. But he was talking about how his father, you know, raised him. And he said his father wasn't overbearing <coughs> when it came to his friends. He would just give him, like, little hints, you know, like, you know, choose your company. Uh, you know, and like this, say little things. He wouldn't say, you better, you better. He would right. just give them like slogans, you know, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that because you have to really try to instill in them the yeah. right thing because once they become teens and become a little more freer, yeah. then uh, they're going to have to choose their friends. Yeah. If you see something, because when they're out in the streets, you, can't be with you don't them all know. Time. Now, if you see something and you can advise them, but they're going to be naturally rebellious at sure. the early teenage anyway. Yeah. So you want to instill in them the right and wrong yeah. so that they will choose their friends good yeah. inshallah because when I, I agree with you because you know when they reach the, those teenage years hey man now they're they're on their life's journey now they're beginning their, their journey called life so if you gave them the compass to get to, to, to so they can navigate their way yeah then man you can sit then you can be in a inshallah in a, in a better position inshallah, yeah. But if you didn't do that, you can't be on top of them telling them don't do this and do that because they're not going to listen anyways. No, they're gonna, and they're yeah. going to look at you. <laughs> Say, you don't do this. Yeah. And that's <laughs> You're telling thing. me this a lot? Yeah. <laughs> you don't do a lot. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. That, that's the other thing. I mean, I think especially uh, as, as, as a father, as men, you really have to be a real man. And, and be, having kids really makes you a man, I think, because uh, you have to be the role model. Yeah. You can't let the TV and these guys on TV be the role model and these strangers and na neighbors or uh, coworkers or colleagues or their the classmates be their role models. You have to be a real man and uh, and let him know that you practice what you preach. Because yeah. if you don't walk the walk, then you never can talk. It's just talk. Yeah. Right? So your children have to keep that. Uh, uh, we have to keep that in mind uh, as parents for sure. Yeah. But what are some special friends that you've had over your life that had a really influential role and who guided you? Like you mentioned Brother Ziad. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You should, yeah. Uh, well, you should, uh, hopefully, you're in touch with him now, or no? Yeah, I like the Facebook and stuff. Yeah, I read his messages <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He has some, mashallah, some good dawah stuff going on, and um, you know, uh, 
a lot of times my friend was my friends uh they are my family that's my first friend my brothers yeah, and my so sister fun. they were my first friends because growing up in america you know they the majority of the people around they weren't muslim Right. Uh, but I, I have a lot of brothers and sisters, yeah, mashallah. mashallah. Yeah. And uh, we were we found ourselves being our own friends. <laughs> yeah. And then when you go out and then you get buddies and stuff like that, alhamdulillah, you know, especially like moving here to Egypt, you really rely on your friends. You know, like, you know, a lot of us when we come here, we don't know where to go to get a flat. We don't know where to, how to do this or how to do that, you know. And your friends are the ones that say, okay, hey, come stay with me yeah. for a couple of nights yeah. till you get it together. Then go check out this brother. I know my friend over here. And it's a network. Yeah. There was a study done. I forgot who did the study. But there was a study done and it asked the different ethnic groups uh, how, how important is friendship, you know. Subhanallah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And um, some groups... We're saying, oh, it's not that very, it's not that important, you yeah. know. Some groups who weren't doing so well financially and economically and socially. However, the other groups who said this is important, they keep that network. So when they're in college, Allah. they come out of college and they still network and they get things done, and yeah. it, it really helps them and their communities better. Brother, uh, having siblings, uh, uh, that's an excellent point, by the way. Uh, having siblings helps, I think, because you're like friends, but. Uh, being Abdul Salam and being a young man in America with this Muslim name, did it uh, pro inhibit you? Was it an obstacle to friendship growing up? Did the kids say, hey, you know, you're funny, you have a funny name, you're different <laughs> than us, stuff like that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but alhamdulillah, you know, like I grew up um, in Chicago. Like, well, There's so many Muslims there, right? Well, yes. And but we, you know, we were, I was just in a regular Chicago neighborhood. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing the Muslims and stuff like that. But the kids in the neighborhood, they would be like, you know, why is your name like that? Like, you know, what is up with that, dude? <laughs> they were like, <laughs> they were like, you know, you're from Africa and this and that, and they would, you know, they would give us a hard time. So, you know, I remember that. But then, you know, as time goes on, you they begin know. to understand. Because in the time, you know, in that time, yeah, it yeah. was like the late '70s, yeah, early yeah, '80s, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Islam was not yeah. like it is today. Today, yeah. it's like popular, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> back then, it was like, you know. Yeah, what yeah. is this? What is, what is, why are you saying that language, man? What is yeah, up with you? Yeah, so yeah. Um, that's why, you know, we had good friendships with um, our the family. And then we had a couple of people uh, who were cool, too, because they were open-minded. Right. Um, but as we grew up, you know, and uh, moved to Los... I moved to... Our family moved to Los Angeles. You had people from all walks of life, you know, they live there. You'll find some of everyone there. You know, sure. Yeah, yeah. Good and bad, you know, different levels. Yeah. And... Uh, it forced us to think you know, more open-mindedly and other people were willing to, you know, accept what you were about. But at the same time, you had to be careful because they were about everything too. So you would choose your friends really wisely. Yeah, Baka Yeah, choose your friends really wisely. And you know, the amazing thing is living in Northern California uh, as a non-Muslim, I had a completely different life. Mm -hmm. Living in the same place as a Muslim, even in San Francisco, which is, I'm not exaggerating if I said 70% homosexual. And oh, a lot yeah. of stuff there. I mean, not just that. If that's not enough for you, I mean, there's, there's like a lot of weird stuff there in that city. Although yeah. uh, physically the landscape is very beautiful, but the, the culture there, if we can call it that, is very strange, okay? So it's counter to what we believe. Mm -hmm. So as a Muslim living in that city for the year I was there as a Muslim, I lived a, a totally different life because yeah. the people that were around, I didn't have all these bad contacts. Uh, yeah. My phone, my, my phone, my internet, my Facebook, my, my friends, they were all Muslims. Most yeah. of them, you know, and, and they were like practicing Muslims and we have our magic and we just had our own little life there. So, you know, controlling the input into your life, you know, the, the things you can control your friends and stuff, mm -hmm. I think it's very important. It Super means important. It's like it changes your whole uh, <laughs> yeah. environment, subhanAllah. So even like, can I say like, Go you say environment, you can even change your Facebook environment. SubhanAllah. If, you're, if most of your friends on Facebook are Muslim. And most of them, they have good messages. They're putting hadith up there. They're yeah. putting Islamic stuff up there. Then your whole Facebook environment will become a Muslim environment. Even if people want to advertise, they're going to advertise. They're going to see what you're into, and they're going to advertise yeah. like halal Muslim stuff, inshallah. Yeah. So you can even make your Facebook environment, uh, yeah. your friends and who you choose as friends and who you don't choose. Yeah. If someone's all crazy, yeah. well, no, I'm not going <laughs> to. Even to this. <laughs> yeah, even if, when they, if they, someone sends me a friend request, I look at their profile real quickly, you know, and say, okay, mashallah, they have the hadith exactly. in there, you know, you need sunset and beautiful things. Because I don't want to open up my Facebook or, or my social media and I get this, like, this totally wicked, like, yeah, picture of bad be, stuff. Yeah. Because this is my be environment. Careful, yeah. I, I want to protect my iman, you know? Yeah. So then, 
unfortunately, you, you might add somebody or you have a friend from the old days that you don't want to delete mm -hmm. him. Hey, he was my friend. I don't want to. I want to give him a chance. I want to give him dollar. And then he's posting some 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 nah, stuff. No, it's man. like okay, delete that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> unfriend. <laughs> and then they Stop write you back. Saying, Why did you unfriend me? They're like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> One guy, you know, I had a friend, you know, I, I, maybe I shouldn't have done this because I hadn't talked to him in two or three years. He's a non-Muslim. He, he's my neighbor. I should have thought him better. I, thought, I should have thought this through better. I say he doesn't talk to me anymore after I become Muslim. I feel he doesn't like me anymore. Mm -hmm. So I deleted him. After one year, when I went back to the States to, to see my mother. He saw me. The first thing he said to me is, why did you delete me on Facebook? <laughs> 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 hey man that's a violation don't delete me man you know, so, but uh you know so it's interesting but yes you to control the inputs on facebook and social media uh it's important because you want to open that up you want to see hadith and and, and positive things mm -hmm. so how important uh facebook skype viper um what is it twitter yeah. all this stuff how important is that uh, as as well in general uh it's a big blessing from allah isn't it but it has a, a sharp, it has a double edged sword, right? Double edged so talk, sword, talk, talk right? Talk about that. Yeah, it's like anything, you know. Um, it could be used for good or bad. You can use, you know, you can use it for dawa. You can use it for keeping in contact with family. Right. Uh, these are beautiful things, but at the same time, you know, a lot of crazy stuff out there. It's like the world. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have to, you know, choose your friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, um, you know, for the young teenagers and stuff, it's really important because you can put one message out there. And then, you know, you can ruin someone's reputation. You can put one picture out there or something that another brother brought to my attention. You know, if I put something negative out there. You affect a lot of people. And it, if, if, what if a thousand people watch it? What if a million people watch it? This is yeah. on my soul. Yeah. This is on, it's my Great. responsibility. It's like. Great point. And, and, but on the other side, if Dawah, if you put something beautiful there, yeah. you know, uh, and something from uh, this beautiful uh, deen of ours, Islam, and people enjoy it and they or in, they're inspired by it you can touch a million people inshallah and this is something that's also on your soul yeah you know we, so this is yeah it's it's a little heavier nowadays when you talk about you know you say one word and it spreads like you know wildfire yeah you know? yeah let's continue this topic after the break inshallah inshallah you guys uh, stay tuned to family issues we're here at brother abdul salam give us a call on the live you guys at 0020238552482 or 249 i'll be right here i'm waiting for your phone call so stay tuned. Welcome back to Family Issues. You guys give me a call live, 2 3 248 or two four nine. We're talking about friendship and its importance uh, in our lives as well as uh, as teenagers and, and really even before that. How important is it to make, uh, how important it is to make uh, good friends, inshallah. But Abu Salam, the responsibility in social media we were speaking about that before the break. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important for us as adults. So uh, what about kids? As our children grow older, and those people at home that already have kids in the teenage years, may Allah help them. Mm -hmm. So what should they do? How tightly should they control the social media and the computer usage, in your opinion, as a kid? Because making friends now isn't limited to like physical friends coming over. Now you have friends. Your kid has a friend in your house, and you don't know he's there. And you might be even, you don't know who he is or where this person is from mm -hmm. because he's in your computer. And your, your, your kid oh. is chatting with him or s speaking with him uh, via the internet. So speak about that a little bit, inshallah. Um, yeah, um, it's this touchy issue. You would say, okay, we'll put the computer in a um, public room, you yes. know? But then now you have an iPad. So it's and like, iPhones and what all you going to do, chain it to the couch? Yeah. Um, like we were discussing before. Um, the compass. Yeah, teach them what is right and what is wrong. Because eventually you're going to have to you know, let them do their thing, inshallah, anyway. So when they're young, you say, okay, no, don't do this. Okay, you can do that. You can control it because they're in your home, they're at school. You, yeah. But after a certain point, you have to, when they see something, they got to be the one saying, okay, I know Allah said lower my gaze, so I'm going to do that. I know Allah said do this, so I'm going to do that. I fear, I fear Allah, so I'm going to do the right thing. Yeah. And that's what we, we have to, you know, make a lot of dua, and you know, teach them and show them by our our example. Yeah, thank you, brother. Yeah. And, and uh, inshallah, they will uh, choose the right ways themselves. And uh, you know, I think the Islamic education is so important, and teaching them the Quran and, and the Deen. In, the, in addition to the regular sciences, which everybody respects, you know, medicine or engineering, as all these parents want their kids yeah. to be, which is great. But what I mean is, 
when you teach them in the Islam Islamic sciences when they're young, and then you, you learn with them. Like, I don't have any knowledge, really, but now my son's getting bigger, so I feel like I'm learning with him, you know? Yeah. So you teach him when he's little and small, or her, and then, like you said, maybe they, they will make mistakes along the way with, with in making friendships and choosing friends and using the internet, but as long as you give them that, uh, that compass, then, you know, you gave them all the tools that they that they that they that they need, and uh, you hope that inshallah that they will, you know, make the right decisions inshallah. Uh, but uh, what is more important these days for kids, physical friends or or um, what's the word? Cyber cyber friends. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know, I don't know, whatever, you know, I don't know what they, you know, the young people are really into, um, but, you know. Uh, I mean, both of them are influential, you know what I mean? I, and I, a lot of times you find that they're, you know, they're, they're real friends sitting next to them, and then the friends online, they're the same people a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. But not all of them, because you have like, you know, a million Facebook friends, you can't, you know? And a mi yeah, right. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, in, it's also important, you know, taqwa. <clears throat> taqwa. This is what we're trying to uh, have in our hearts, the God consciousness. And, and this is what we're also trying to uh, transmit to our children. Shabbat. This taqwa. If we have taqwa and we're making our salah and we're praying, then even when we make mistakes, we're going to make mistakes, but we, inshallah, we'll, we'll get back on the path. And you want friends with taqwa, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. That, you know, they who have shyness, you know? Yes. Um, who have modesty, um, honesty, you know, honorable, uh, um, did I say honest? Yeah, honest as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always uh, um, strong. Yeah. Strong, not weak-willed. Yeah. Um, this ki these uh, good characteristics, uh, kind. Yeah. Um, uh, just so um, you want the same kind of characteristics uh, in your friends that you want uh, in yourself, you know? Yeah, of course. And yeah. they can join together on these positive things, inshallah. And inshallah. And you know, everybody, including the, the youth and ourselves as adults and young adults, Everybody's going to fall off the bandwagon and mess up. But if you're close to the, the straight path, inshallah, then it's easier to get back on it. Yeah. But I see people, unfortunately, they're, 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 they're far away from the deen. And so when something happens in their life, they get further away from it. And they don't turn to Allah. And as a result of that, also, when you're far away from the deen, may Allah help them and may Allah guide us all. Then, of course, your children learn from you and it gets, it gets worse and mm. worse. So we're going to take a look at an important clip uh, from Sheikh uh, Mufti Ismail, Ismail Mink. Mink speaking about friendship in Shalta Adam. We'll be right back. You guys stay tuned for more family issues. What is it that Islam teaches about friends? We need to know that we are governed or we should be following a certain set of rules and regulations regarding how to interact with people whom we consider friends and what we should be sharing with them and how they should be impacting on our lives. And for this reason, we have dedicated these few moments to share the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, which are Islam with one and all. To start with, he says, A person is known by the friends that he or she has, and therefore it is very important for every one of you to select their friends, his or her friends, very carefully and to make sure that they have not befriended those who will have a negative impact on them. These teachings of the blessed Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, are priceless. Because if he says a person is known by the type of friends he or she keeps, what we need to realize is that is exactly the way it will be. For example, and I'm going to give you just an example off the cuff, if a person's friends are all on drugs, there is a 99% chance that that particular person is also on drugs, even though they might hide it very well to their family members and others. And what is it in common between them if they were not on drugs? However, sometimes, and this is 1% of the time, where a person has 30 friends and all of them are on drugs and they are claiming that they are not on drugs, there is a 1% chance that they may be telling the truth. And perhaps they may be working on those friends of theirs. However, there is a greater chance of them deviating. And for this reason, you know, there is an English saying, birds of a feather flock together. It is important for us to know we interact with, we mix with people who are like-minded, people who think 
in a similar manner. Sometimes people ask us a question and that question is answered also in the religion that if I were to be in good company that which is good for me those people who are good for me I might be bad for them so how do I know who is in good company and who is in bad company? Well, the religion has an answer for that and it teaches us that if you have a good impact on someone, it means they are in good company, they have good friends. And if you are having a bad impact on them, then they are in bad company and vice versa, which means if they are having a bad impact on you, then you have bad friends. And if they're having a good impact on you, even though you might not be that grand a person, then they are definitely good company for you. So that solves that matter. Now let's move further to the sharing of secrets between friends and what type of information we should be giving them. There is a hadith or a saying of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, that is found in Sunan al-Tirmidhi where he says, أحبب حبيبك هونا ما عسى أن يكون بغيضك يوما ما. When you love someone, you love them in moderation, because one day they may become your enemy or they may dislike you. This is a very powerful teaching. The reason is when we love someone, when we are close to someone, when we have friends, we sometimes share some secrets with them, we give them a little bit of information that we would not like others to know. In that particular instance, we can become enslaved by that particular piece of information that they are holding and then they can either blackmail us or they will hold it to the degree that they can make us do whatever they want threatening to release that information. For this reason, it is important for us to know what type of information we give people and how much we give them. Thirdly, what we also need to know is do not allow anyone who wants you to be their friend to actually be your friend. The reason is you need to choose your friends. Do not let those who want you as their friend always be your friend because they may not be material of friendship. We need to have circles of relation. When we say circles of relation, you have the innermost circle and then you have a slightly bigger circle or a circle that is made up of people who are not as close and thereafter those who are not even as close as those and thereafter just acquaintances. The reason we say circles is there are some people who are so close that we can share much more with them whereas others we need to hold them at an arm's length with respect, with love, with care. Love for our deen, for our religion, for our maker, for, for the entire uh, community at large. But that love should be based on our understanding of what love is. It does not mean that you love someone so you drop all barriers and you let them have whatever they need and want. No. We need to realize that certain people are within a closed circle. There are others whom we might not trust that much. We might not have tested that trust yet. We might not know exactly where they're standing and for that reason we won't share so much information. We won't enjoy such intimate relation with them and so on because of their distance with us. We must be beneficial to those who have befriended us or those whom we've allowed to befriend. If they are making a mistake, it is our duty to tell them that you are going wrong here. And if we don't tell them, we are going to be making an even bigger mistake. We are going to be responsible on the day of judgment. The Almighty is going to ask us, I made you a friend of so and so. Why did you not remind them of their duty towards me? You saw them going wrong and you'd never ever batted an eyelid. You never ever told them that what you are doing is wrong, what you are saying is wrong. Now, what we need to learn as well from this is never feel bad when you are corrected. Because sometimes when a person is corrected, if he or she feels bad, nobody's going to correct them in the future. So if I feel bad because someone has highlighted a mistake I am making, the only way I will excel is when I thank them. And I really think of what they have to say. And sometimes I might feel that maybe they have not understood me properly. But the minimum is I have taken their advice. I have not disrespected them. They have been genuine to me. They have corrected me. And I need to thank the Almighty that certain people are there to correct me. You are never alone. You are never alone. Welcome back uh, to Fem Issues. That was uh, Sheikh Mufti Ismail Mink, I believe from Zimbabwe, giving us some, some really wonderful advice. Uh, he mentioned a couple uh, great points. The first one, 
Uh, he quoted the hadith of being known by your friends. Uh, how did that strike you? Wow, that was just so beneficial to watch that. I mean, uh, alhamdulillah, he had so many good points. And yeah, I mean, he said that's the word of the, the, of the Rasul. So yeah, so, so, yeah. so, so much wisdom in that. Um, yeah. I think of some of the, I think of the person that I was and also the friends that I had. And so, and think about that. You might say, oh man, don't, no, I'm not like that guy at all. Don't judge me by that guy. But if all these people are around you, it does say something. Uh, he also great. He also made a great point about the about the drug usage. Mm -hmm. uh, what yeah. do you think about that? He had some nice words. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, if everyone's like drinking and uh, do are doing drugs, and then, you know, you have that one person who's not. Over time, <laughs> he's he's, he's probably will and <laughs> so he, get away from them. Or, yeah, he or said. Run. <laughs> he said 99 percent chance that uh, this that y if you have friends doing drugs and you will do drugs. 1% chance you're not. Yeah. And you, hey, I know how that is, man, because back in the States, it is impossible for us, or nearly impossible for a man or a woman to be around a bunch of people engaged in these activities and not participate in them. As, as, as if you're drinking this tea now with your Huda, Huda TV mug, mashallah, on the table right here. How would you not do it if all the people around you are doing it? Yeah. So I think that's amazing. And actually, you know, Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid, he mentioned a story to me about one of the, the time of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, I believe. And he said that some people found some people getting drunk. So they bring him to him, and they, he was going to apply the lashing on them. And one man said, no, 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 I, I wasn't drinking. They said, yes, he wasn't drinking. He said, um, in fact, I was fasting. So the Khalifa Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, I believe, just lashed him, lashed him. He said, well, you, you will be the first to get lashed then, because you have no business hanging around these people. So I, we should, I'm not a shaykh, so we have to ask Sheikh Karim to verify that story, but I, I do remember that correctly. But that goes to, to, to company. Uh, so I thought that was an excellent uh, point as well. What about gender? Gender and, and mixed gender friends. I mean, this is difficult for adults, even and, and especially kids. Even as adults, many of us are, many people are in uh, working environments that necessitate some kind of interaction between men and women. And, and of course, for young people, this is a very difficult, complicated situation. What is your advice concerning co-gender friends? I mean, when, when, how would you deal, how are you going to deal with that as a parent, as your child, children get bigger, inshallah? Um, inshallah, uh, Islamically, you know, um, that's a serious issue. But should a man have a woman who's just his friend? What is <laughs> <laughs> I tell people that. <laughs> I mean, it might sound, uh, you know, stern and it might sound, but w what is this? Okay, if, if you're working <laughs> with someone and you're working in the same place, you're co workers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> if uh, you're a teacher, and uh, they're the student because there, uh, there are situations. Even you have, you know, if you look at history, you have women who taught um, uh, in the past. You know, right. uh, Muslim women who were scholars. Yeah, who yeah. Taught. But it was in an environment that was conducive to this. If they had a hijab up, or they had a curtain, yeah, yeah. or it was in, within the sunnah. But what is this? Okay, she's my friend. <laughs> For me, <laughs> you know, it, it sounds all regular and nice, but. Yeah. It's dangerous. Or, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves because some people take a coworker relationship and it's really a friendship relationship and that it's crossed the line, but then they say, oh, she's my coworker or students. I remember my days back in the university, man, and back in high school and even junior high, and I know you, I know you do too. You have a relationship, oh, she's my classmate. Yeah. But you t it goes too far, right? It's not like really in the Islamic environment. However, if you look at, um, you know, and I'm not like a scholar, I'm not even close. But uh, like the, the Ansar and the Muhajireen, if you think about this relationship but to, uh, during the time of the Prophet. Yes, yeah, the friendship when, between yeah, them. They immigrated from um, Mecca. Mecca and they went to Medina and the people in Medina, they helped them. So this was a different kind of friendship. Um, and even you had men and women, if he saw, so I'm sure if they saw them defaming one of their sisters, you know, it's a, beyond a friend, they say, this is not my friend, this is my Muslim yeah, sister. Sure, sure. And I don't, you know, sit and chat and drink tea with her. <coughs> However, yes. if anyone messes with her, <laughs> right, right. I'm her brother. And, you, you know, if I, she's walking down the street and you notice her from hijab or whatever, and someone says something or does something that's incorrect, you stand up not only as a friend, but as a brother. Or if you um, hear that uh, a sister in the community needs some help and uh, the brothers and the sisters have some money or something that they can help out with, you know, so this is... It's beyond a friend. Yeah. The, the, it's a community the, relationship. Yeah. This is your sister. Yeah. And, but, and there's etiquette in dealing with your sister, your yes. Muslim sister. Yeah. Thank you, Rahib. And I wish the people in the States have this, uh, would have this kind of, and some of them do, 
this kind of understanding because sometimes we are so strict about about cutting off the communication between the two genders that look you know especially when we're in society like the states where we are the minority group you need to be able to help people when they need help and like you said loan yeah. money or facilitate something that they need as a community so it's it's, it's a delicate situation to say the least yeah. but that, that is important yeah. uh I just mention one more ahead. point on that yeah not going overboard uh you know if if i'm not educated on how to interact with my sister then I can go overboard the brother, yeah. you know, have taqwa, you know, yeah. and I, you know, you know, yeah. will be overboard. So uh, I have to even educate myself more yeah. and educate yourself on how uh, the prophet prescribed, how did the sahaba, how did they interact? Right, you know? certainly. Uh, yeah. How did the, the, the first and second generation, how did they interact with each other? Certainly. And, and then we got our blueprint. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, yeah. but see how they interacted with each other? roll with yeah. it yeah you know here at hooded tv I, I work with mainly men but i do remember the work environments that were with women uh and it's challenging but if you're honest with yourself and you fear allah uh, it may allah help you get, get through and, and and you can have a formal a respectful professional relationship exchange emails through work work related topics and, and that sort of thing but it's difficult you know it's challenging i mean as practicing muslims i, I would definitely say it's challenging so imagine now for a youth a teenager um, what will you do when, when your boy Mustafa gets bigger and he begins to talk to the girls and this sort of thing, and my son as well, Abdullah and Suleiman? Uh, how will you deal with that? I, I, I suppose you have to talk to them before they get to that point and yeah. to coach them and, and... And educate them, inshallah, you know? Um, education and information and knowledge is beautiful because when you have knowledge of, of the correct way of life, then it, you know, it opens up your mind and you know which way to walk. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, there's, you educate them on the right way to walk. Certainly, And yeah. make dua that Allah will put the taqwa in them that they will walk that way. So, yeah, you know, you just, you know, you try to keep them in Islamic environments. If you can, send them to, and when they go to school, yes. have a school, an Islamic uh, school where you have yes. good people there, you know, the brothers and the sisters uh, behaving in a way that is correct. Yes. And um, when they come of age and they uh, come to a certain age when it's time for them to get married, do you, you know, you help them? Yes. Uh, you know, and uh, not starting with how, how much money they make yes. or, you what know, kind of what, is the, what kind of family they have or what race they are, but you start with taqwa. Yeah. Right. Or even how pretty they are. You start with taqwa. Yeah. And you help them. You help them get married <laughs> at a, you know, even if it may be a little younger than people um, may. But look, if you look at the young people, they're doing things before they, uh, you know, get older and older and older. So if Allah blesses uh, us to, you know, help our children get married uh, and establish themselves like this as soon as possible when it comes to those kind of things, the interaction between men and women. That would be good. Uh, I think the facilitation of the marriage at an early age is important because, brother, people in the States and back home, they always say, you know, gain some experience. Don't get married right away. Don't, don't throw away your life. Have some fun first. I really believe the opposite, you know. And I used to think like that but as a non-Muslim, but it's important to marry early, to have a lawful way to vent your, to experience your desires. And that's very important, getting married early. And don't, don't be an obstacle as a parent to that, especially in the Middle East. It's so difficult. I see a lot of these young men you know, I know people in their 40s who were trying to get married be, be, and they can't afford it because the culture. situation, yeah, the culture, culture, you know, prevents them from doing so. And, and th this is why the moon car is spreading because people say, hey, I don't need a wife then. I, I can, you know, have girlfriends and they begin kind of adopting this kind of bad culture. Uh, we only have a minute left, brother. What about Facebook groups? Because now it's become very specific. In, in the, you can find, you know, a Facebook group concerning uh, any kind of certain topic. So you really have to be careful about what your kids are getting into mm -hmm. because they can find, if they s develop some sort of bad habit, they can really find it online. Um, mm. So I think fa Facebook, like we said, is a two-edged sword, uh, uh, to say the least. Are, are you in any of these Facebook groups? or? I, I think I got some groups. Um, I have to look and see. I got some groups that, you know, they were cool groups. So, you know, I became, but a lot of, I became an uh, affiliate with them, but a lot of them are, you know, like Islamic groups and stuff like yeah, hadith, that. Hadith, I love Allah. Yeah, yeah. And Put a TV groups. satellite group. Put a TV. Yo, who the? You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, you know what? Really, just take care, you know, especially with the internet. You know, I, I had um, uh, a friend of mine. I have a friend of mine. And his children, I saw him. He, his children, they had a, a little iPad. 
And, you know, alhamdulillah, now with Google, you can say something. Yes. And it searches. It, yeah, yeah, it searches from the voice now. So, and these uh, kids, uh, you know, they're from here. They're from Egypt. So their pronunciation is not all that good in English. So they'll say something, and they're trying to say something else, and then anything will pop up. Right. Yeah, so they'll be trying to do something innocent, looking for something innocent. And something bad will come up. Something bad will come up. Yeah. So we really have to take care with the Internet. And I mean... We do yeah. have to take a lot. And they got to definitely contact Omar Shear at Tech Talk at Hooded.tv. Oh, yeah, we got to ask him. Because he did a whole program <laughs> about this, about yeah. how to put the locks on your computers and yeah. stuff for the uh, for the kids, man. Tech Omar. Talk. Okay, I got to watch Tech Talk. <laughs> <Shout right down. laughs> and then, you know, then I'll know what to do because it's important. This the yeah. internet stuff is, it's very interesting. It's like, you know, this thing in your home it's or even an internet cafe. Yeah. And, you know, it's dangerous. It's the world at your fingertips, subhanAllah. Yeah. And it's beneficial, but it's dangerous, too. SubhanAllah. Barak Rafiqi, thank you for your time. So I'll see you next time, inshallah. inshallah. Thank you, I certainly appreciate it. And you guys, Barak Rafiqi, you guys at home, stay tuned uh, for, uh, to next uh, edition next week, inshallah ta'ala. We hope uh, to see you then. And until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Through sorrow and through grief, through happiness and peace, you are never alone. So now, as you long for your past, prepare for your future, but knowing nothing's gonna last, you see, this life is but a road. A straight and narrow path to our final abode. So travel well, O oh Muslim, and paradise will be your home. And always remember.